Hey guys, how's it? Aloha. Okay, Jeebs here, your old composer here, decomposing your favorite songs based on your requests here on the Decomposer Lounge. Gojira, the art of dying. I've had a lot of people on me about this and, and uh, uh, I love the band, no two ways about it. It's just cycling through all these suggestions. God, I wish I could just do this full time. I mean, how would you guys feel if I did like three a day? But here's the thing with that, apparently, it really chokes up the algorithm and then it doesn't get any reach and it just and then people unsubscribe because it's too much I don't know I just want to <laughs> just want to have a great time I just wish I could I don't know maybe maybe if I go find a sponsor and says here we're gonna give you a clump of money you just do this all day I don't know I don't know anyhow ow, oh shit yeah I hurt my shoulder yesterday oh my god old man fail I've got what's I guess it's called frozen shoulder I'll, I'll be fine, but I'm going to be drinking coffee with my left hand. Speaking of which, you guys know the story. If you see any advertisement, it um, doesn't support and monetize the channel here because it's a copyright claim. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, that would be great. Headsets links, AKG240, will also be down below. And also the link for Gojira Music and Merch will be down below. All right, let's do this. Art of Dying, Gojira. All right. Ouch. I'm sorry. I know some people are probably going no, but I can't. I can't go on without uh, just glamming over what I just heard. First of all, that first minute of percussive opening, um, automatically oh, with that drone in the bottom. I thought for a second it was maybe a didgeridoo, but it, but it doesn't sound like it was to me. But what I loved about the progression of the arrangement and the percussion at the beginning is that. Um, you know, there's an obvious syncopation going on there, um, <laughs> and I didn't square the meter uh, on that because uh, I just was just really just getting into the arrangement. You know, remember, my breakdowns aren't about theory. They're just about what I'm feeling and me peeling them back as a composer and, and how I hear things. Um, but what I loved about it is as the progression of the arrangements grew, really what we, what we were feeling growing was a changing in the mix. Okay, all of a sudden the main high end percussion all of a sudden dropped back a little bit, but then it, they drew on it or they, they, they widened up the ambience by adding reverb to it. And then of course the drone got louder and louder and louder and built up and built up. And then by bringing it, bringing it back down, I was like, 
you know, you, you, I, I, I was let, led, led, I guess that's a great way to put it, led into a space where I was like, okay, all right, what's cool, what's cool, what's cool, what's cool, what's cool, and then they hit us with all that power. And <clears throat> even though there is, you know, some pretty cool syncopation going on there, um, there could be a, uh, it seems like there might be an odd rhythm meter switchback, um, and then the chunks in which they're playing it. Um, I just love the fact that that, that four is being held, you know, first it's just being held by the cymbal ride and then it's being held by uh, the hi-hat. This is, the, the the journey this is taking me on, you know, I can't help, the last song I think I did at Gajira was um, Amazonia, but I can't help but feel uh, kind of a, a, a tribal emotion through just getting into what we did. So stand by, let me uh, get me back a little bit here. Yeah, all right. That whole phrase where everything was in that cut time, what I love, and I had to listen to actually the bass because um, what it feels like the guitar is doing is that they're connecting, so they're like tied, you know, eighth notes, you know, there's no muting and stop starts, you know, with their, it, it just feels like a, like a continual dun, 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 kind of a vibe to it, and I couldn't, because there was no stop start or anything, I had to lean into the bass to kind of hear if what it is, if that's what it was that was happening, that's what it seems like was happening, and that bass tone is absolutely insane, just absolutely monster. All right, let's go. Before we get into this next section, I just have to say two things. The, the growling performance uh, of, of the singer there, or the performer there, is, is coming from such a, like a hollowed, um, what's that term? A uh, hollowed what? Hollowed fields or something like that. Just harsh and hard. Not, the, not so much the tone as much as it is, even though I don't know what the lyrics are, because I, you know me, I don't do lyrics on this. I could just feel from his performance. Everything is feeling, right? I mean, we feel music. That's what we do. We feel music. And then we apply that to who we are as human beings, whether we're aggressive, chill, mellow, psychedelic, jam bandy, or whatever, you know, our predisposition is before we listen to music. That's how we select what we like. Um, this is coming from such a heavy space. Just insane. And another thing I wanted to bring up really quick, I love the work the drummer's doing. And you saw me, I started, it hurt for a second. And I lifted up my hand, I, there was that that 30 second that he did on the hi-hat and stuff. And it's just, this this right now is a rhythmical ceremonial ritual that I'm feeling, you know, thus far in this. So let me go back a little bit. Ouch, jeez, this thing sucks. Urgh. All right, here we go.
like I said, rhythmical uh, ceremonial ritual. I'm just so, I'm just, you know, I think it's because when I was young, um, you know, John Bonham, uh, Neil Peart, um, Terry Bozio, uh, Narada Michael Walden, uh, you know, the drummers that I listened to was just the music I was listening to back in the day. There wasn't any of this powerful speed um, drumming going on. And, you know, all the genres that have changed to take us up into this. Um, I think I think the coolest thing when I was a kid was uh, uh, when John Bonham, I think it was Achilles' Last Stand, or which I forget which one it was, where it was, do, 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 you know, there was that little, you know, flammy triplet thingy that he did. We were all going, wow, that was so cool. But now it's just, it's become such an incredible art form and expression of uh, uh, percussion and drums. And I'm just in awe of that. The stamina is just absolutely insane. When I watched that, I think it was the Meshuggah Bleed too. I just still get blown away by that. It's just absolutely huge. Something though I want to glam on really quick is that da, 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 da. So he's growling, he's really killing it. But, but what it feels like to me is that in the background they actually sang melodically that da, 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 but he's growling through it. So you can kind of hear a little bit of a melody behind it. And if he's singing that while he's growling, then that's just epic beyond capabilities and comprehension for me, how, <laughs> excuse me, how he does that. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you guys who are really big Gojira fans, but man, I love the fact that they inserted a little bit of that melody behind that growling and that whole wall of sound with the guitar come on I gotta stop right there because these guys are just letting us get in back to a groove, which I'm pretty sure they're gonna probably give us the people's elbow with another changeup. Not only do I love the obvious, which is, you know, uh, a uh, counter arrangement to a melody, so da 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 da, and then the harmony is on this side to that riff. Hard left, right split, great uh, ambient dynamics. But listen to the bass. What is really driving this track for me is that the bass is pretty much following, you know, the changes in the riff here. But he's in this straight boom, 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 boom. So he doesn't let that rhythm, you know, while this is going da 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 whatever that is, right? Through the bottom and with that killer bass sound, sound he's following that da 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 You know, there's still that eighth in there that's driving it forward, especially with this just kind of like, you know, Hammer of Thor kind of drum pattern that's happening here, this rhythm in this little breakdown they're doing here. So I'm gonna take it back just a little bit so we can listen to the bass, okay guys? Let's do this.
Okay, this looks like it's a long end, but I'm just gonna glaze with it, okay? I don't wanna catch any smoke from you guys if I end it too early. Wow, they should call this the art of transition. Um, uh, because I don't know the lyrics, I'm just, I'm just looking at the title, and it, it really sounded like it was a journey of passing. Now, I'm not gonna say dying, it says art of dying, but on more in a, more in a uh, conservative way of looking at this, because I don't know what the lyrics are, there's no two ways about it. The point they wanted to bring across were, were these transitions that were very long and arduous. And when I mean arduous, I'm talking about the power of the composition that was pulling us into these next levels, especially when there were rhythm change-ups and stuff. Um, as it was fading, it was a really long fade. It almost felt like it was like the final breath before there was kind of like um, what, I, what I consider whiteout. Um, I've surfed my whole life. Um, a few times in my life when I've had long hold downs, especially when you're getting your ass handed to you underwater because of the tur turbulence. Sometimes when you're running out of oxygen, so you think you start to kind of white out a bit and you don't want to get to the next level because that's when you mucky die dead. Look out, you gone. But um, it kind of felt like as that long fade was coming, it was kind of a white out period. And I could, you know, like, but I could see that there was more coming to it. That's why I said what I said, I was gonna hang in there. And then when they turned it into this kind of reverse uh, recording effect of the chords that, or the notes that they were playing, it felt transitional. And uh, that's, that's, that's how I pulled from it, you know? That's what I pulled from it. Uh, something else I wanna say though, uh, is that the drum work in that last long phase, the fills he was throwing in there were very bottom. John Bonamy. Funny, I was just mentioning that, you know, so I really felt that. You can kind of see me glam up a little bit and uh, go, yeah, 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 I love that stuff. So anyhow, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for being patient. Um, I hope, you, you know, I did it some justice. I know the hardcore Gorgira fans out there, much like a lot of fan bases out there, you know, sometimes I get a little like, oh, I hope I do it justice. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Once again, a cup of coffee link will be down there. My Patreon link is down there. Um, I just actually did lyrical breakdown of a perfect circle um, three libras there. But do not fear, I will do a lyrical breakdown here on this channel of one of your favorite bands tomorrow. So anyhow, all that being said, thank you so much for your support. Cup of coffee, links for everything, Patreon, headsets, blah, 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 is down below. All right, guys, have a killer day. Aloha. <laughs> all right.